Hello again, everybody. This is the Fantasy Sports Boss. And uh, today, tonight, I should say, as this video is being posted uh, uh, Wednesday evening, I wanted to discuss a little bit more in depth uh, Jacksonville Jaguars wideout Calvin Ridley and, uh, you know, his 2023 performance from a fantasy football perspective. Um, and also the fact that he's going to be a free agent uh, going into this offseason. And we're going to discuss, you know, some possible landing spots for him. Uh, what kind of impact he could have going forward. Is he still a wide receiver one? These are all things uh, I thought would be um, good to talk about today. Now, if you're new to the channel, of course, hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification button as well. Continuing on with our um, off-season uh, videos, off-season coverage, even though the NFL season, 2023 season, is still going on. Um, wanted to get a jump start on... Uh, you know, player, individual player videos and, uh, you know, continue with our lesson learned videos uh, that have been very popular and well received um, uh, that we, you know, we started posting as well. So now, as far as Calvin Ridley is concerned, let's take a quick trip down memory lane. Obviously, he was suspended in 2022 because of the gambling uh, situation while he was with the Atlanta Falcons. Prior to that, Ridley established himself as a wide receiver one, like a low end to moderate wide receiver one in fantasy football. Like he never had like the huge, you know, he had one ninety plus catch season. Um, you know, didn't really have those monstrous, um, you know, PPR worthy campaigns. His, his high in catches was ninety in two thousand twenty. Excellent season, one thousand three hundred and seventy four yards, nine touchdowns. His first three years in a league. Um, Ridley, 26 receiving touchdowns. So that was a, you know, a massive amount of production, um, especially in the red zone for, for, you know, who was a big, big, uh, big, uh, game player. Um, and, you know, he was drafted accordingly, lots of expectations. And he generally, despite Julio Jones being on that offense as well as another wide receiver one, he established himself as a solid wide receiver one in fantasy. But, but of course, then he was suspended for the gambling. And then the Jaguars made at the time what appeared to be a very shrewd move, uh, acquiring him at the trade deadline 2022. And that put in motion for myself uh, a series of glowing sleeper upside videos that, you know, uh, myself and many in the industry posted. And it was, you know, honestly, uh, and you could say, oh, I'm still making excuses. You know, I, I don't want to give in on lo on losing the bet on, on Ridley because uh, I bet on his potential this season. But again, I wouldn't change anything because he was, this is a wide receiver one talent who proved that, uh, that kind of ability prior to getting suspended. He's still young, uh, not even 30 years old yet, going to an offense that was very pass heavy with an ascending quarterback in, in Trevor Lawrence. So it seemed like all the pieces were there for Ridley to take off. Um, and certainly week one against Indianapolis, he comes out and catches eight passes for 101 yards and a touchdown, 24 fantasy points in PPR. It looked like, you know, every glowing video recommendation uh, came to the forefront. But then the inconsistencies began. A five-point week two, seven-point week three, 11-point week four, bumped that to 20 in week five, but then down to six in week six. One point in uh, week seven, just a disaster there. 14 in week eight. Um, and, you know, there was a 31-point game in week 11, a 25-point game in week 16. But overall, just looking at the numbers here, one, two, uh, three, four, five, only six games out of 17 did Ridley post more than 14 PPR points. And that was extremely disappointing. For the season, 76 catches, 1,016 yards, eight touchdowns. Not awful numbers, but not anywhere near the wide receiver one numbers. And I had him as a low-end wide receiver one coming into the season. Not anywhere close to that. Um, you know, even wide receiver two, those weren't wide receiver two numbers. They were like high-end wide receiver three, maybe borderline low-end wide, low wide receiver two numbers. Um, for Ridley, very, very disappointing season. Lawrence did not play well, but Christian Kirk was like the wide receiver one there. He was getting most, the, 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 the majority of targets, if you will, um, you know, when Ridley was on the field as well. But here's a couple of things. And again, you might think I'm making excuses for him, but there are some advanced metrics that showed that Ridley actually had a better season than numbers suggest. He led the entire NFL in end zone targets with 24. All right, that is a massive number. And if Lawrence played a little bit better and he was shaky in the red zone, he would have had double digit touchdowns, no doubt about it. Um, fourth in green zone targets with 14. Um, you know, he, he, 
there was some a lot of unrealized air yards as well. So he was getting down the field, uh, but he was way too boomer bust um, for for many of us. And he and we took a loss on him collectively because you know he was going in the third round by the time the season came around, and he was a he finished wide receiver seventeen. That was a loss there um, in terms of um, the overall numbers for Ridley. Now. He's going into his free agency year, and I get the sense he's not going to return to the Jaguars. You know, they have Kirk, they have Zay Jones, they have Evan Ingram. They really don't need him. And even like I said, when Kirk and and, and Ridley were on the field together, uh, Kirk was the preferred target. And then even Evan Ingram, like Evan Ingram caught over 100 passes. It was just a phenomenal season. Christian Kirk would have been over 90 himself if he didn't get hurt. Um, so then you have to start thinking, like, where where can Calvin Ridley go? Right, you know, I mean, he's got, he's got a lot of potential destinations, a lot of potential options. He can go to the Jets. They need another wide receiver for Aaron, um, uh, for Aaron Rodgers. You know, the Giants have needed an ace wide receiver for a long time, so he could go there. Um, you know, the Buffalo Bills, like there's there's issues there with Stephon Diggs. Maybe he goes to the Buffalo Bills. Like they could certainly use him there. New England Patriots, depending on who they get in. So these are all. Um, potential destinations. Now, I do admit, I'm probably going to be back on Ridley again next year. I just can't quit the ability, the the end zone targets, the field stretching ability, the speed. He's got it all. And again, we've seen this wide receiver production from him, wide receiver one production from him before while he was with Atlanta. I'm not sure he can get to that level again, but I think he could be a strong wide receiver too in the right situation. So I'm going to keep it open on Calvin Ridley. We'll revisit him when he finds uh, his new home or goes back to Jacksonville. And, uh, you know, we will update his value then. Guys, let me know what you think. Post in the message, as always, uh, the message board, uh, the comment section, I should say. Uh, what do you think about Calvin Ridley for next year? Did you have him this year? Did you take a loss? What were your thoughts? And uh, again, hit that subscribe button. More videos on the way.